Speaking of laptops, I saw this article on cultofmac.com and it caught my attention because of the headline. I mean, it's an unusual headline for a Mac-specific site, particularly a, a Mac fan site, basically. It's for Mac fans, Cult of Mac. I mean, it says cult in the headline, in, in, or sorry, in the title of the cult of Mac. They're admitting. Yes. That, have I gone too far in the title there? Well, maybe, possibly, probably, usually. It's memorable. The MacBook is a disaster. Can Apple fix it? The headline is the MacBook is a disaster. That's pretty bold. I don't... I didn't even go that far, and I'm not cult of Mac. I just said, hey, guy, the keyboard's a problem. Yeah. Otherwise, I kind of like it, but th this guy goes in into even more depth as to why he considers the current Mac to be a disaster and also kind of r retrospectively looks at previous MacBooks and how at one point in time, and I was actually one, a person in this camp at one point in time, people used to... MacBooks were so good that people used to recommend you install Windows and run Boot Camp as, the, as a Windows laptop alternative. That partially has to do with the fact that Windows laptops at the time weren't, from an industrial design perspective, weren't really pu pushing many boundaries. So that could have been another reason. But I remember once upon a time, I had, when I had the shop downtown, and people would come in with MacBooks that they wanted to upgrade or something like this, and they would just be primarily running Boot Camp on it. Huh. Or even before that, Parallels, which was a third-party software, mm. uh, which was a virtual, uh, you would have a virtual window into Windows. And people would primarily live in Windows, or they'd have some accounting software they had to run in Windows, and but they would still gravitate towards a MacBook because they liked the, the package the way that it was once upon a time. So he references that in this particular article, but he talks mostly about why this current version is a disaster, Pointing, of course, to the butterfly keyboard, which many people have had issues with. Uh, I've covered that extensively. But then he just, he goes into a subject which I had kind of just left out of my mind for a long time, having been on MacBooks and e every version of MacBooks. Ports. <laughs> Dongle life. I just got over it. I just, I had been on MacBooks for so many years. I just accepted the fact that you don't have ports anymore. But then switching back to Windows, it's been so liberating to have ports hmm. on a laptop, particularly a professional, not necessarily an Ultrabook, but but a, a workstation, let's say. That's just, I did that twice in this video. I'm never doing that again. Oh, by the way, I just I flicked my fingers in the quotation kind yeah, of bunny yeah, the, ears thing, so I'm never guy. doing it again. It's really embarrassing. Which but. port do you use? That you well, on this on? one, I use the SD card slot every day. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's, uh, we use a lot of SD cards, eh? Around here, but in a professional environment, presumably, that's a possibility. SD cards, they're floating around in professional environments. It's possible. Uh, another one that I could see utilizing that you're using, actually, you're using dual, dual versions of it right now, is HDMI. You need, a do you need dongles for HDMI. Uh, you can have, is this one? Yeah, this one has a full-size HDMI port, hmm. the... ThinkPad, the 15-inch uh, ThinkPad, also has a full-size HDMI port. You have traditional USB ports on here. Uh, sometimes at home, for example, there'll be like a charge cable floating around for some device. Uh, there'll be a PlayStation controller that has the old school, and, and you could just, it's just more versatile. It's, it's really not even an argument. It's just more versatile to have a variety of ports. I get it. The Type-C connector is the future, absolutely. But it's just your life is not there yet. Mm -hmm. And so you end up with dongles to a certain degree. It, it's crazy to even talk about, but I really feel you forget if you live the MacBook Pro life in 2019 with a recent version, you, you kind of become numb to the fact that you can't do those things. You're just accepting like, okay, fine. But then it's actually on the flip back that you realize how convenient it can be to have access to that. But it's not news. Everyone knows this, but it's interesting to see it referenced on a Cult of Mac website where you feel like everyone has kind of uh, accepted their fate when it comes to the current state of MacBooks. Anyhow, he goes into a couple of other subjects where he says it's a disaster, upgradable storage and RAM. Well, that's been a long time in MacBook land. But of course, we've got this uh, upcoming MacBook which aims to alleviate some of the, at least the keyboard likely, on this upcoming 16-inch MacBook Pro. But it's a curious thought. Imagine, Will, 
that this upcoming powerhouse 16-inch MacBook Pro, imagine if it has multiple ports on it. Imagine it had an HDMI port. Imagine it had an SD card reader. Hmm. Is your life better or worse? Tell the truth. Oh, definitely better. It's better. Like, even with one SD card reader, that would be, like, so much more helpful. Convenient. Yeah. <laughs> I know. I know, but you're not going to get it. I highly doubt it'll happen. Obviously, articles like this exist, but for whatever reason, it's everybody, they want a very clean thing going on. And you just, ports don't look that way. I look at the side of this laptop. Yeah, it's all these weirdly shaped things. I mean, I'm not saying I feel that way. I'll take the convenience. Yeah, it doesn't bother me at all. I the, know, the ports, but I just like, feel like they're not going to do it. I mean, this thing has tremendous ports on it. <laughs> Let's just do a real quick. This is the new 17-inch uh, Razer Blade laptop. It's got a full-size Ethernet jack. It's got two traditional USB ports on this side, as well as a Type-C connector, which is Thunderbolt 3 capable. It's then got a headphone jack over on the other side here. We have a full-size HDMI port, another traditional USB port, then a Type-C connector again, uh, Thunderbolt 3, and a full-size SD card reader. Okay, so not that we needed a recap. I made a video about it upstairs, but I just feel like as a reference point, I'm really speaking to Mac users right now because I was using exclusively Mac laptops for so long. The feeling is incredible when you just pop an SD card in. Mm -hmm. Yes. It had it had tremendous number of ports on it. It was the SX thirteen something or other. This is a Fujitsu laptop we featured recently. Oh no, that was the Vio too. The we Vio, looked at yeah. two laptops in a short period of time. Two Japanese laptops in a short period of time. It was the Vio SX, and it was also a Fujitsu laptop, which we featured on Unbox Therapy. Which, if you're looking for a thin and light laptop with a tremendous number of ports to liberate your port anxiety, liberate yourself. <laughs> They exist, too, if you want a thin and light. But it is a different package once you start cramming all those ports in there. And maybe this one takes it a bit too far. But there's some ports, like we mentioned, that just on a daily basis we're using. And so, anyhow, we'll see what Apple does. Maybe we could start a petition. Just throw, let's do the 16-inch MacBook Pro. Let's do an SD card, and let's do an HDMI. And then, and then everything else can be Thunderbolt 3. Mm -hmm. Cool? One USB-A? Okay, fine, deal. We're not getting an A. There's no chance we're getting an A. It's too chunky. Yep, it's too chunky and old-fashioned. We're not going to get that. In SD card slot, we should be able to go... Because how many people use a MacBook Pro with a, with a, a high-end digital SLR? It's just so common. Or in a production environment that has SD cards sitting around. Anyway.